A portion of this video is sponsored by Zeiss Vision USA. Welcome to Professor Heinz's Choice. I'm Zeiss Ambassador Kenneth Heinz Jr. Today, we're taking a look into post-processing this street image from Istanbul, Turkey. So stay tuned. I know it's been quite a while since I've done a new video in my Let's Edit series, probably a couple of years now, but I thought with the return, I would do something fun that you all are certain to enjoy. I'm going to take you through Adobe Lightroom Classic and my post-processing workflow, but first, here's a message from our sponsor, Zeiss Vision. Eye health is something that we all should be concerned about, even more so for us photographers, utilizing electronic devices on a daily basis for hours. You may know my Zeiss family for their camera lenses, but they are also manufacturers of optics for eyewear. Zeiss offers a variety of optical solutions, such as Zeiss's digital smart life lenses with PhotoFusion X that I'm wearing right now, featuring their brand new DuraVision Gold UV lens coating. Find out how Zeiss can help you by visiting zeiss.com forward slash find an eye doctor and remember to go for your annual eye exam. Now this photo from Istanbul is one that many people on Instagram thoroughly enjoyed and many people asked, how did you edit that? So I thought let's edit that together. And so that way you can see how my thought process was and how I came up with that particular edit. As always, if you're interested in any of my edits, you can purchase my presets in my store at professorhines.com forward slash presets. So let's get started with this photo. Now, let's look at this image and look at what dominates, what stands out to you. Two colors definitely stands out. That's this yellow that we have in the lights under the canopy, and then we have blue that's for our buildings and the sky. A lot of times people who are starting out with post-processing, they always ask, where do you start when it comes to editing? I just don't know. Just look at where your attention goes in your own pictures. So in this case, it's actually really easy. The colors that dominates the photo are yellow and blue. So keep that in your mind. Do you wanna keep those colors in your image or do you want to actually take those away? For our temperature here, we're going to make some white balance adjustments and I wanna to go to a more cooler tone. And then for our tint, I want to take away all of that purple that we have and just put it down to zero. Now I'm going to do a highlight adjustment because I don't want this section to overpower everything else. So let's decrease our highlights and we're gonna come down quite a bit and we're going to open up our shadows and then I want to increase my white level. Because I brought my highlights down, my whites increase and then for my blacks, because my shadows were opened up, we're going to bring the black level down. So why do I do that? The reason for that is as I bring the highlights down, I want to bring the light back into that area because I'm recovering detail so that way things stand out, but then I wanna bring that brightness back. And then same for my shadows. As I'm opening that up, I'm losing the contrast, but then that's why I'll come down with my black level so I get that contrast back. Now, because this is a street photo, we don't mind it being a little gritty. So let's add in some texture and a little bit of clarity. All right, boom, there we go. Now this section tone curve, you may see it as curves if you're utilizing um, Lightroom or Lightroom Mobile, but it's the same function, curves, tone curves, same thing. I'm actually gonna select this option here, and this is my point curve. Now something that you will only find in Classic as opposed to Lightroom or Lightroom, Lightroom Mobile is this point curve selection here. Now, this is where I can actually save presets that are specifically for the curves. And so for this, I wanna select my Skyline Curve Strong. And as you can see, that is real strong. Now let's come out of this and we're going to make some adjustments to our dark and shadow areas. So let's open up our dark level a little bit. And then we're going to do the same thing for our shadows, but we're going to drastically open that up. 
so that way we get that detail back from our shadows. Now let's make some color adjustments. What I wanna do here is adjust my red, go a little bit more orange, do orange, maybe a smidge more yellow, and then yellow, a little bit more orange. Green, we want that all the way yellow. And blue, I wanna make my blue have like a water color, more turquoise. So let's bring the blue hue over about 50-ish. Now let's come down to luminance. I wanna decrease some of my luminance in the red. I wanna increase orange, do the same for yellow, uh, maybe about right there, same for green. And then next is color grading. I truly am a big fan of color grading. So if this is a feature in Lightroom that you've never used, you definitely have to try it. Adding these color grading tints to an image can really change the dynamics of your photo. For our adjustments here, I'm going to adjust everything. Shadows, mid-tones, highlights, and even a global adjustment. I want to go into our warm kind of range in our hue for our shadows. And then we're just gonna add a little bit of saturation. And then we're gonna come over to our mid-tones. And all I wanna to want to do here is just make a luminance adjustment. And we're adding a lot here. And then let's go over to our highlights, add a little warmth, and we're gonna add a lot of saturation so you really see that stand out. And then we're also gonna open up the luminance a bit. And then let's come to global. This time we're going to put our hue where it's more in the blue area and then increase our saturation like so. And then let's bring down the lim luminance for our global adjustment. Now let's come back to this view because I wanna make a minor adjustment to my balancing. And we'll bring that to about 30, oh, that's good. Now I'm going to scroll back to the top because I wanna make another color adjustment and this is dealing with profiles. Profiles is another powerful color feature within Lightroom that sometimes you can just use it as a standalone. There are times to where I'll use profiles as a starting point, ending point, or in this case, we're using it in the middle of our adjustment. So it doesn't really matter where you add it. And the way profiles function, it's basically like a filter. If you think of Instagram, when you're uploading images where you can apply a filter, it's doing the same thing. So these filters or profiles, they actually sit on top of all of your adjustments in Lightroom. So it's not changing your adjustments in any way. It's just adding like another layer on top of your image. So we're going to go into profile and I'm gonna use my favorite, Artistic 3. As you can see, that really changed the dynamics of our photo. I don't want it to be too extreme, so we're actually gonna back off of this and go halfway. So now that we've done that, now we want our focus to be the train and the platform. Yes, everything else in the image is nice, but we wanna make sure that our subject stands out and we have a nice, fall off with the light as you get towards the outer part of the image. So let's come down to our vignetting and that's here in our effects panel. And so we're just gonna start that well, about 30-ish. Now, as you can see, that really darkened this photo, but we don't want it to be that dark. Also don't want the light to be so harsh from the middle of the image to the outer edge. So we want that to be a little bit smoother and a little bit wider. So let's do a feather adjustment. So let's take it from 50 and bring this to 100. It kind of got a lot smoother with our lighting. From there, we're gonna keep our midpoint where it is. So once we've done that, we're gonna do one final thing and that's a few selective adjustments by utilizing masking. So let's select our mask and I wanna do an adjustment with the sky. And what I wanna do here is open up the white level because this is a little dark and we want it to stand out a little bit more. So that looks pretty good. And then we're gonna do one more adjustment, a radial gradient for our buildings. And so, yes, I could do an object select, but I, I like using the radial gradient, honestly. And we're gonna just sit it in the section of where our buildings are. And it doesn't matter if we have a little overlap. Again, it really is, editing is about what you feel and applying that. It's like, don't care about anything else in that matter. And, and there's no right or wrong way of doing anything. It's like, if you make a mistake, you can always hit undo, but 
are there really mistakes in art? No. So it's like, just go with what works for you. So we have this over this area and we're going to open up our shadows because we want those pretty buildings to kind of stand out a little bit more in our photo. And that looks pretty good. And so there you have it. We have a final image. So here's a look at our image of what we started with. And then here is a look of what our image looks like finalized. And it's just a beautiful street image to where we have these nice warm tones. Then you have that surrounding area that has that nice cool tone. So it's kind of a combination of both cool and warm together. And I just think that for this particular photo, by focusing on those two colors, our yellow and our blue, we just amplified this photo for a very beautiful and pleasing look. I hope this video was very helpful for you. If there were tools that I utilized that you've never used for your own images, be sure to try them and see how they work for your own images. As always, you can find more of my con content here on my YouTube channel, or you can find more on my website at professorhines.com. So until next time, I will see you all in the next video.